My suspicion has been drawn, uh, Marion, as to whether or not, because I have had, many times I've had the Treasury on the ropes, as whether or not they thought, ah, just leave Mr Horton to swim round and, ver- and sink eventually. Right, now, so you're that's suggesting a very that serious, that's it is. very serious. You're suggesting that you've been hung out to dry because uh, they knew it was you and it was really up to them to tell you. You're paying the price for this and you could pay the price for this at the polls in 2016. You listen, and, and yes, not of my fault. And isn't that a disgrace? This most embarrassing and regrettable matter has caused unnecessary ridicule and harassment against the integrity of honourable members. I have done nothing wrong but treating me this way I've done nothing wrong But treating me this way George got an interview I thought I heard in the radio today. It's, it wasn't his fault. Everyone's fault but his fault. It, 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 that's the sort of way we see it. You also, members also have a responsibility to, to check on their own uh, affairs uh, as well. My big uh, concern, and I suppose relief about this at the moment, is that at last the uh, announcement has been made of the one member who hadn't admitted to uh, paying his uh, contributions, because up until now there's been a dark cloud over every single member of Tinwell. Well, an MHK embarked on a, a pattern of repeated, intimidating and malicious behaviour which made people feel upset, threatened and undermine self-confidence. That is just one of the, the many findings and accusations made in a report of the Timbal Standards and Members' Interest Committee. The report investigating the conduct of North Douglas MHK John Horton will be released publicly this lunchtime, but it's been leaked to Manx Radio. It certainly is. Here we have an MHK, someone who's been a member of the House of Keys for 20 years this autumn, accused of lying, accused of bullying, and basically till this conduct in the office has been unacceptable and he should apologise. It's found, the report that is, that he was responsible for aggressive and threatening behaviour, behaviour which it says fell below the standard expected of members of Timbald and led to a member of Timbald office staff resigning. It certainly doesn't make good reading. The committee finds he challenged the process, legality and authority of those of these proceedings and his personal attack on individuals was extensive and unrelenting. He's been accused of showing total disregard for professional staff performing their duties. The report goes on to say he failed to accept the authority of the clerk of Timwald. Clerk Roger Phillips, for example, described Mr Horton's behaviour as unrelenting and aggressive, unprecedented, he said for him, in his 30-year career as a clerk. I have done nothing wrong for treating me this way. I have done nothing The clerk is wrong. The deputy clerk is wrong. When you read the report, the acting third clerk was wrong. Mr Wilde is wrong, part of a conspiracy. The independent investigating officer into the formal complaint is wrong. The chair of the investigating committee, the standards committee, Mr Robert Shaw is wrong, the committee itself, Mr Quayle and Mr Quirk are wrong in their conclusions. Indeed, it it is alleged in here that this court was wrong to uh, permit a quorum of three of the standards committee to conduct the investigation in the first place. That was wrong. You were wrong. The legal advice reported in here of the learned Attorney General was questioned. He was wrong. (laughs) Everyone is wrong except Mr John Horton. And I am sorry, but um, a certain member has, through this report, demonstrably been in the wrong and should be asked to apologise. Yeah, yeah. And that is, this, that is the duty of the committee to so recommend, and it is our duty to give the utmost consideration to that
time as I go and apologise. Now, hell will freeze over, James. Hell will freeze over before I go back there and apologise. Confrontation? I don't enjoy confrontation, but sometimes you have to confront people with the facts when they are the facts, rather than when people talk when I that I call a load of rubbish on many occasions but when you actually bring the facts to the table and prove them wrong. It is, and I have to say, I, I think that's an unfortunate comment that uh, Mr Horton has made. I don't believe for a minute any department would stitch up any uh, MHK for whatever reason. Uh, least of all Treasury on such a sensitive issue as, as pensions. Maybe Mr Horton has some other evidence that I'm not aware of, but uh, I think uh, unless he has that evidence, um, I think he should be very cautious with his language for the future. I'm only too pleased to do that. But the thing is, I have not been caught out. What I have done, as you know, Adrian, is provided you with the information that, of course, then came out that I wasn't paid, when I was so emphatically confident mm. I was paying these voluntary contributions. And you've not lied to anyone? I wouldn't lie to anyone. What is the point of lying to anyone? Because if you lie, you get found out. To, to go back a step then, so, you, so prior to the events which unfolded at the end of 2014, you were aware that there was something going on. We don't because they, I've tried to get hold of the report which dealt with that original situation and it's off limits basically. But you, you, are, you were aware that there was something going on in the office between these people. No, I wasn't. No, I was not. To anyone. I wouldn't lie to anyone. What is the point of lying to anyone? Because if you lie, you get found out. Well, the amendments that Mr Houghton have tabled, um, we feel, are extremely dangerous and very, very irresponsible. The reason why we say this is that the First Amendment, in terms of having registrars opt out... It's, not, it's going against everything that the bill stands for. Now, the reason why we're, we're so pretty much against this is that he's saying that it's giving free people the freedom to choose, especially the registrars. We feel it's actually giving the people the freedom to discriminate. And at the end of the day, when we have uh, LGBT couples walking into the registrar, they're going to be turned away because of a registrar's opinion that he's a, he or she is against their, their sexuality. So... <clears throat> To come from an MHK, I think this is very irresponsible. Some might regard that as being obnoxious uh, as far as the different sides, but I hope that I've always been fair in this house. So as far as the, North Doug as far as the member for North Douglas is concerned, yes, I do think he's a bully. There's no doubt about that. I was, a, I was the Minister of Education, had to save my Chief Executive as far as... as, far as uh, from the situation caused mainly by the Honourable Member. Go on about that just for, just for, for one more moment. Dealing with issues, uh, dealing with issues in the, 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 uh, the, the, in the chamber, if I can say, in the chamber, in the Timble chamber, in the Keys chamber, used to, be, used to be a lively debating chamber. Now people just nod legislation through. They, they are ill-knowledgeable of the uh, of the subject in hand i do know that most members fail to read their papers i know the council of ministers fail to read their papers i don't know what they're doing with their time but when you spend hours and hours and hours in the evening researching making sure you know what you're talking about before you open your mouth or if the if the the, the policy that's before you um, is worthy of support, then you have a good knowledge of it. Now, Timble members, this is quite revealing this, Roger, Timble members, many of them, are not really in depth of, uh, of the, their knowledge and understanding of policy. And ask me why. Is it because Please they're just... being asked, well, is, is it because they asked to do too much? No, no, no. What they're doing is, rather than reading their policy, they're all playing on their mobile phones. They're playing on their mobile phones in the chamber. Okay. They're playing on, uh, on their, their, their iPads. And, and they're not doing Timble work on their iPads. They are on social media talking to people in chat rooms, which I just can't believe the mentality and that's got to stop in itself because rather than listen to debates their minds are on other things right all right well of course that is an issue of the conduct of Tinwell. it's which, a very which, serious which, issue roger we, because they're not interested in well, they're not showing interest in policy okay, but, and the debates that are happening uh, these days are very few and far between because an awful lot of members aren't engaging in that well let's now